Hi. Hi. How are you guys? We're doing good. Both looking very beautiful. Very, yes. Very, very vibrant. Oh, thanks. I did take a shower for you guys, so. Oh, we, we, feel, we feel honored. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was talking to Nat before this. You were saying how we've been listening to your guys' podcast literally probably since you guys started it and like you guys are the, a big reason why we started ours uh -huh. Aww. yeah thank you what a compliment yeah you guys like we really look up to and we like totally speak your language like that is wellness and like spirituality and everything mm -hmm. like that is our wheelhouse we don't talk about it that much on yeah. our podcast the weirder the better though honestly. yeah the weirder the better yeah. <laughs> we're into it I feel like Elizabeth and I are in so deep that if someone asks us what's weird, we're like, we have no context. You don't have a yeah. gauge anymore. Where yeah. I'm like, is that weird or is that normal? Like yeah. the level where you meet us is, it's deep. So yeah. like, what is the weirdest? I don't, I don't know. I don't, to, to the, to the, to the non-wellness aficionado, everything is weird. That's true. 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 So you guys actually started in 2015 and we're really on like the forefront, not only of podcasting, but definitely about wellness yeah. podcasting. Mm -hmm. And how did you guys fall into that? And then also to fall, fell into that niche. It really just came about because those were the conversations that Steph and I were having, much like how you say you guys connect on that stuff. That's what we were connecting on. Yeah. And it just sort of made sense that that's, what the podcast would be. Yeah, I think it was like, you know, so much about life is just like a timing issue mm -hmm. and or, or, or benevolence. And we just were, I think, at the right place at the right time and had the right interests. Right. And right. that's really, yeah, <laughs> that's why. Right, right. Yeah, no, it was, mostly what it was. Yeah, like the story goes is that I was styling a show for the E! Network and Embassy Row, which was the production company, they do like Watch What Happens Live also, if anyone's a Bravo person. And Shark um, Week. And, it's and Shark Week, <laughs> equally important. And yeah. um, I was styling a show for them. I knew somebody who just come on, was brought in at the production company to um, sort of create a podcasting like incubator that would actually be used to as like test concepts for TV shows they wanted to do. Oh, and so okay. she reached out to me and was like, if you have any ideas, let me know. And that's how it happened. So it's like one of those things, if I had never started randomly side hustling, styling YouTube talent and like <laughs> yeah. saying yes. And had I said, not said yes to that one random book cover job for that one YouTube talent person who's Grace Helping. <laughs> that you never and got, then, oh, I was gonna, I was like, I didn't know you were gonna drop the name because I was like, that uh, one thing that you never got credit for. Right, right. <laughs> um, and then, and then putting people on blast. It's fine, it's 2021, the wheels are off the wagon. And um, then she got a pilot order and they asked me to come on and style that. And then the, that's how the conversation started. And it was just like, I, it's so fun to be able to look back now, it's almost seven years later and really track like, oh, this is what brought us to this place. Yeah. It's so special. All of these like random things you would never think would link up. And then it's like, oh, wow, now I have this like totally other career because I went to this one job and like, it's just yeah, it's so wild. Our our podcast came from a meditation where I like had an epiphany and I was like, I have to start a podcast. <laughs> yes. Meditation followed by a Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> but, and we need to do it, we need to do it together. Yeah. Um, but like you were saying, like you guys are very multifaceted, like you have different careers and different um like side projects and things like that. When did you both and I don't know if you both decided, but when did you both decide that a nine to five job really wasn't for you? when we both couldn't keep one at all <laughs> when the workforce said no you're not welcome here um no I for me it was just like I always knew you know like I went to school for acting and yeah. I tried when I graduated to like get the job to make the money to buy the acting classes and it was just like the I, I had to get on a train in the morning go to New York City and like I was working at a production company and like it just made my soul die like mm -hmm. immediately and I, I literally would have this vision of like getting on the train getting off the train getting on the train getting off the train and I felt like my life was just happening in like transit 
And I was looking at everyone and I was like, how is this like weird sheep life? Like for, like, I just, for me, it felt like I was already wasting my life and I was 21 years old. And so I just, I mean, I've made money like waitressing and doing things that were really flexible so that I could pursue being an artist on my own time. Um, because as much as you try to have like a corporate job or like a nine to five and have a side hustle, it's just so hard. Cause that takes up so much of your life. Yeah. So I don't know. I think you're better just being like as independent as you can, if you have a dream of some other kind, because then you can really maximize the time spent focusing on what you want to focus on. Yeah. yeah. Mine was more trial and multiple error. I did a lot of, you know, I was like, I did the internship thing in school and was, you know, checking off like, okay, this doesn't really vibe with me. Corinne, I know we talked about this, like I studied PR yeah. um, mm-hmm. in school. So I had like some PR internships, like entertainment PR and that sort of thing. And I was like, okay, this sector of the industry isn't for me. And then did um, like editorial fashion interning. And I was like into that, but I was doing that in Michigan. So that was very limited. Yeah. And then when I came out to LA, I really, you know, I started in celebrity gifting suite PR, which is a whole other (laughs) journey, which at the, you know, this is pre Instagram. And um, so getting, they were used to be like a very big deal. These events where you would give products to celebrities and you would pose with them Mm -hmm. and they would pose with them. And that's how product would get in front of celebrities so that they could attach their name to these products and it was just like such a different time and I thought it was so cheesy and so I was like (laughs) nope that's not for me and then I did more like creative um like more like creative conceptual branding and PR stuff which was amazing then I got hired by Rachel Zoe to do the Zoe report conceptualize that run all her stuff that job I was there like three years I got let go heartbreaking devastating such a good lesson at 25. Mm-hmm. And then I moved on to CAA, definitely wasn't for me working at a desk there. And yeah, I was like let go. Intense. I was let go before my soul was sucked away. So it was a blessing. <laughs> and um, from there, I was like, okay, like I want to no longer put myself in the position of doing stuff for other people. Like I have such mm-hmm. a clear vision and I want to follow through on that. And so wasn't the easy road, but it was certainly better than what the other things I experienced that I knew weren't for me. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like at this age, like we're, we're both 27. I have a lot of friends who are, (laughs) we're at that, we're at that point (laughs) now though. A lot of my friends who are inherently creative or want to be creatives full time are like, okay, like now is my transition point to go from that nine to five that was like helping me pay the bills and things like that to like, okay, if I'm going to do, you know, like you were saying, Stephanie, like if I'm going to follow my dream, like I got to just jump Jump. into it and not maybe not necessarily have a safety net, which is really scary. And I, 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 I'm watching like my boyfriend go through it too right now because he's a director and a writer and he wants to do that full time. Yeah, it's really hard because we all want security and we all yeah. want to feel like just like safe and like and and like we know what we're doing. But sometimes right. you can't know what you're supposed to be doing if you don't know what you're definitely not supposed to be doing. And so exactly. like doing something wrong pushes you into doing something right. So you kind of like have to do the trial and error. I just think it's like really the the most slippery slope is getting like a really good nine to five job where like in yeah. and by good I mean like cush because yeah. then you know you're you're doing what the corporate America wants you to do which is like follow the money but sometimes having no money in the short term is much better because then you get like a lot of money in the long term mm-hmm. whereas if you get money in the short term you could probably maybe get like the same type of money in the long term and yeah, at the right. end of the day like following the money isn't really gonna get you where you need to go though you do need it you know we mm-hmm. live in like I think more of like a gig economy now so you can like piece things together yeah and I don't know for me we're both manifesting generators so we're really good at oh, yeah we both are Am yeah I so guess. you're good okay. at wearing like multiple hats you know mm-hmm. like when you have that you can do like a lot of things at one time and I think that's probably like been our blessing in in the come up yeah 
kind of feels like a blessing and a curse sometimes <laughs> because it's like why for, for me at least I it's like I just have more ideas and more ideas and yeah so then I just keep stacking them on and then I burn myself out but it's hard on yeah. the flip side it's hard because I love doing it right so it's like you can wear yourself down but you're doing something that you love yeah so I guess I'd rather be worn down that way than like in corporate right. America well, I think like it's good than like in fluorescent lighting, like no. yeah. <laughs> but also, like you do a lot of things, and like the good shit sticks. Like you know, when when we were starting this, we were, as she said, doing other things, and this just was the thing that had the most momentum. And so it's like even just a little follow through, I think, of an idea can lead you down a good path. But you yeah. do have to learn to let some of them go. Yeah you know, like pursuing some of them and letting some of them go and knowing what's worth your time. Cause like you said, you only have so much energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think another part of it is like being your own boss and like the struggles that come with that. Have you guys faced any of those? Oh yeah. yeah. Again, trial and error. <laughs> trial and error. Like it's, it's, it takes a lot of discipline um, and scheduling and just being on top of it and it can be almost harder because you don't have anyone to answer to yes. so that's that you just have to learn how to communicate and not to your with yourself and like what you need and when you need to shut down and that was such a big lesson when everything shut down and it was just you know working from home all the time I know so many people myself included just like burned out because I didn't know how to stop yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm really curious how you both structure your like at home work day, because for me, it was like, I, I have like a very set, um, like work schedule and I start mm -hmm. at 10 and I end at, you know, this time. And I'm curious, are you guys that rigid or do you, is it more loose for you guys? I'm definitely not rigid. And I know <laughs> that that's made it very difficult to be in partnership with me because I don't, <laughs> Um, I don't put work ahead of myself. Mm -hmm. So I think that that can be like challenging. And then also like, because I'm like a writer and my brain is creative, like I'm just like really all over the place as far as like my mental state is concerned. And so like, if I get like struck with inspiration, then like I have to do that. And so it's yeah. learning to like learning to sit down and answer emails to me is like literally someone has to like chain me to my desk like that's yeah. like a very it's like really challenging and I still struggle with that and then in the same regard like treating my creative stuff as work is also something that is challenging because like you know as a writer like Corinne I know you spoke about this it's like Sometimes it's like you, you have to like, I have had to learn to like be in the process mm -hmm. in a way that like feels fun, but is still productive. And that's something that's like really, I got, I literally got a printer. Okay. Like my life hack for work and writing is getting a printer. I know that sounds insane. Yes. I have a printer. <laughs> But like the printer has changed. Cause I feel like with the computer, something happens to me where like, I don't connect and yeah. I can't like I can do emails for like 20 minutes and like that's it mm -hmm. and like with writing if I'm still in the computer I I'm I feel like I get lost so I have to have it like printed I have to have everything in front of me I, it's like a different discovering that process has been like what I've really been like working on yeah and that doesn't really feel like something that I was conditioned to think of as work yeah exactly I get yeah that. for me I um I, it's definitely changed so much, like I said, over this past year plus, and I'm so much more gentle with myself and I allow just as much time away from the screen and away from the doing as I do giving myself just time to sit and, you know, take a beat and move away. And so it's more of like an in and out process now. Like I, I set aside some time for myself in the morning, mm -hmm. check in with emails. And then I try to not be a slave to my emails um, until like another time in the afternoon. So I used to kind of like always just be available because that was sort of like what kept the wheels going was yes. to like, that's how things happen. An email would come in, you respond, then, it, you know, and then it's the back and forth and then the deal's done. But like now, you know, I have a friend of mine who had a, a note 
like in his byline on his email uh, signature, he would say, I only check my emails twice a day. And like the last, and he put the time that he, you know, stops checking them. And I loved that boundary. So I'm That's playing around awesome. with that. I just loved that. It was just like this. And he's like a high level exec. And he was just like, this is how I do it. That's such a good I idea. So inspired by that, right? And so yeah. then people don't aren't anticipating to hear from me. Like that's off the table. Like I had, we just took a month off. We always take July off, and I put my, um, you know, I did like an uh, an out of office thing, and it was the most liberating thing on the planet. And I was <laughs> like, I need to have this on often, and just yeah. because if they know you're not going to respond, like it. I think for me, I just feel like what I work on personally is just like, like, I don't have to respond to this until I want to type of emails. And like, it's okay to just set aside a little bit of time each day to handle it. And as opposed to like it driving your truck, because Mm -hmm. we get to a place I think now where the screen is our portal to the, to the world. And Mm -hmm. so it sort of feels like more important than it actually is. And I actually took email off my phone. So oh. to really drive wow, that, that home. is so impressive. I know. Well, I got a new phone and I haven't put it on yet. So <laughs> to clarify, but I'm in loving it. And I don't think I'm going to, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to put it on unless I like need to. I think that that's a wellness practice in itself though. Like being, cause we've been talking a lot about like at the end of the day, when we have like a shitload of texts and we don't want to answer them and we kind of realized it's socializing. So like you've been at work all day and then like you're texting everybody back, it's socializing. And so I think part of like my wellness routine after work has been just, I go on do not disturb at like five. And yeah. I'm just like sayonara, like I can't, I'm not talking to anybody, you know? But I think setting yeah. those boundaries is like such an important part of just holistic. Yeah, and like you don't realize how distracting like being constantly and you always talk about this like being constantly accessible is yeah, like cuz you, you you can't like focus on your thing and then like answer every single email that's coming yeah. in every you know 30 minutes. So it's, it's like, like yeah, all like I call doctors and none of us are doctors. Like yes. you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no the constantly accessible thing just doesn't work for me and I think it came with age of just like I'm 36 years old run my own business I can I can set the boundaries for myself and that took a lot of time and experience of like what doesn't work to get to that point and it's a constant practice but yeah I think the main thing from like working at home and self-starting is like having those boundaries or playing around with different things and trying new things to see like maybe if your inclination is to like constantly be you know available try increments throughout the day also like see what works and feels better it's really important to when you're when you work for yourself to really like really love what you're doing I think is really like the main thing like because no one's driving your like you said no one's driving the truck no one's driving the ship no one's no one's telling you that it's important so like I think the motivation for me also comes from when I'm like really engaged and Mm -hmm. if for some reason I lose interest or I'm disengaged, like there's no, I can't be disciplined to do it. And so like continuing to find that motivation is also something that is, can be challenging when you're working hard to build something or when things aren't working or whatever like that, or when you have no like discernible feedback from the outside world, Mm -hmm. you know, when you're like, okay, I'm doing this for me. Like, I think in the beginning for us, like we didn't, we didn't have any real reason to do it mm-hmm. like other than like us. Yeah. yeah. You know, nobody was like, this is important. In fact, people were like, are you insane? And we're like, <laughs> yeah, I guess, you know? And so it's like having that driving force is the thing that gets you to show up. And yeah, then, like, sorry. Yeah. No, 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 no. Go for no it. I was just going to say like, when we started podcasting, it wasn't really like seen as monetizable as it is especially like especially in comparison to now right so I remember saying out loud to a friend of mine like when she was like well what do you want to do I was like I want to make money doing that so retrograde and it felt like a bold statement Uh (laughs) it was just almost like this is a pie in the sky dream 
at that time. Yeah. But I just, we knew that I think when you tap into purpose and what you're doing is of service and you have fun doing it, it's like, that's the best feeling in the world. Yeah. Stephanie, you mentioned that you like can get, I mean, as we all can, like uninspired and like you're just lacking creativity. Do you guys do anything that kind of reignites that in yourselves? I think the one thing that I can say that helps that is to take a step back. Yeah. That's really the only way to see the picture more clearly. And um, I don't have any like quick way to change that. It's yeah. like just perspective. And for me, going outside and being in nature and walking around and just like sitting on rocks, sitting next to trees, like walking around, like really simple kind of sounds ridiculous, like tree huggery type <laughs> energy, but I guess no. that is me. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. And I think as yeah. a writer too, when you get stuck, sometimes you want to throw yourself more into something because you're like, no, no, I like have to figure this out. And yeah. you kind of, and then that makes it worse. And so, and it's one of the hardest things to do is to take a step back. Right? Mm -hmm. Because you do feel that passion. You just, you're not, there's no clarity on it right now. Um, so I've, I've had to force myself to take a step back from things because you can make it a lot worse for yourself. So. Exactly. And like, you know, we're like, I don't know about you guys, you're a little bit younger, but like Elizabeth and I are like the Adderall generation where it's like, there's no, there's no step back. It's take more Adderall and think harder and look mm -hmm. harder. And like, I, I'm not, knocking the taking of the pill necessarily but it's the mentality of mm -hmm. go harder and find yeah. it instead of walk step back and like listen for it I think that consciousness is something that like I really had to shift I know Elizabeth had to shift it because it just speaks to how hard we can be on ourselves when we think we have to have something figured out or we think we you know it's not really going to get you, I don't think, long term where you want to go to bang your head up against the wall until you can squeeze that one drop of creative juice out of your dry and dry. Uh, yeah, rock. yeah. It's not going to happen. Um, we've been talking a lot about like work and obviously mentioning a lot about your guys' interest in wellness, but I'm curious if you guys think that work and wellness have to exist in completely different spaces or if you think that through your work, you could also have a wellness routine or do you guys kind of separate them completely? I mean, you guys talk about wellness, I guess, at your work. So <laughs> right. Because there's a way to do it. Right. That's a big part of it for us specifically. But I think that you have to have a healthy relationship to how you spend your time in order to be in a place of well-being. Yeah. And ironically, speaking about wellness sometimes has made it so that like I at least I like take for granted that I have to mind my own practices yeah. so you know definitely incorporating how you like what Elizabeth said into the way that you approach the work is really important because like if I'm really high energy and I'm not grounded or whatever and I come into this or I'm not focused or I'm not you know and that's happened so many times then I'm not really a, of service to my work anyways so mm -hmm. I think yeah it's yeah. You guys both always into wellness or how did you kind of arrive into that space? Well, we invented wellness. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think, uh, no, definitely not like growing up. Um, I got there through like having um, health problems. Mm -hmm. um, so like that you know, I grew up in a very like traditional East Coast household of Jewish, Italian, like breads, pastas, sauces, mm -hmm. um, neuroses, like that was like the <laughs> <laughs> dish du jour. And uh, I, I got thrashed and I got fucked up by, you know, not being someone who could live in that society comfortably mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and was forced through health problems to discover like the impact that nutrition has, the impact that yoga has, like all these different things were kind of came to me out of like a survival necessity. And then on that path is when like, I think that merged with the world of wellness that has come to be this trillion dollar industry that it is today. But like, right. 
which is crazy. Cause if you just like track back to even like 10 years ago, like 10 years ago, we're crunchy was, granola freaks. Like we're no, not there was no, in the convo. Yeah. There was no conversation for this. Like that was mainstream. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. And so I think as the, as the world of wellness grew, like I've definitely grown with it, but I think part of us being in the right place at the right time had to do with both of our journeys up until that point, discovering it because of personal necessity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mine was more of like a mental well-being thing. As I said, in my twenties, like having the rug pulled out from under me career-wise, like when you get fired and you have this job that you love, it's like devastating. Yeah. And, but it was also the biggest gift. Um, and it got me into really, well, first I had to be like, listen, I'm not my identity. What I do for a living is not who I am. And to learn that at that age was so important. And I'm so grateful for that. And then, um, so I really kind of came, went into this self exploratory phase where I, you know, went to Costa Rica and did like a yoga teacher training thing. And I went to Costa Rica you know, alone too. <laughs> yeah, like it was that, you know, it's par for the course, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, it was that sort of thing where it was just like, okay, who am I? And yeah. that's really where my entryway in became. And I also think like a little bit of like hedonisticness, if that's a word of just like wanting to feel good and Mm -hmm. figuring out what the options were. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's, I mean, a lot of people's journey into wellness, it's like kind of out of necessity. It's like either mentally or creatively or however, um, or health wise, like you kind of it becomes your last option. You're like, okay, well, I'm going to give this a shot. You know, Mm -hmm. everything else is, you know, not working. Um, I think that's definitely how we got into it as, <laughs> as well. Um, we were talking on another episode about like the word wellness and how it's, you were saying like, it's a trillion dollar industry now. I'm curious since you guys have been in the game for so long, like wh- how you think the word or the term wellness is being translated now? And if you think it's kind of lost its way a little bit? Kind of like self care, you know, that, it's like, yeah. oh, that got way off the rails. <laughs> Yeah, well, we say on the show, we call it the artist formerly known as wellness because we think that that (laughs) word is just so overused Uh and it's always like a little cringy and it's also like a a little bit like, what is it? What's the definition, right? Like, uh what is it? It's sort of this like a very broad strokes term that has been branded for marketing. Yeah. yeah, it's it's been co-opted. Like when I walk into a CVS and it's like the wellness center and I'm just like, hold up. Like that is not, <laughs> that is not what- CVS actually has some good stuff, I will say. I know, but like, but if you look at like the, sure, like I love a CVS. It was like my childhood safe space as far as like shopping. And, and no, like, I mean, they've got some good wellness things okay. that I discovered. Just wanted okay. to say that. Okay, well now- They're trying. You- they, in paid partnership with yeah are you sponsored, yeah. sponsored. <laughs> i actually did get like a wellness box from cbs and i had like a very like like a oh we're fans like thing and i had like a very mixed reaction because on one hand i was like i'm offended <laughs> and then on the other hand i was like wait maybe i can like infiltrate cbs to like do better mm-hmm. as far as like their because i say that because True wellness comes from, I believe, really having consciousness around what we put in our bodies, but also how we create the things that we put in our bodies and like the entire supply chain of Mm -hmm. what that is. And then also what materials we use. Like there's like, there's a consciousness that is supposed to be infused into this concept that I feel has been, that's why I say co-opted because it's like, CVS might be trying, but they're also still putting vitamins out that like have 17 ingredients before the thing that you actually need to be taking. So Mm -hmm. it's worse for you than necessarily just like not taking it or trying to find a piece of spinach that maybe isn't grown in a chemical environment. I don't know. We're living in hell, but that's a separate (laughs) conversation. Um, But I think that's the problem with wellness is that people saw it coming as a trend and by people, I mean like marketing Mm -hmm. and then it watered it down to such a degree where it's difficult to discern what, what even is true wellness for you to access and what is something that is just being sold to you. 
And I think as consumers, it's our job to really educate ourselves to know what we're doing in order to make that decision for ourselves. Yeah. And then it, you know, and then it goes into like who we're giving our money to and what their practices are. And it's, there's so much to it. I think it's Steph hit the nail on the head. It's like really infusing consciousness into all actions, personal and outward facing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and for, for our listeners who, you know, want to, you know, incorporate some wellness practices into their own lives. We also talked about, we've talked about before how it's a blessing to be able to take part in some of these wellness practices to have the time to be able to do it's a privilege to be able to do that do you guys have wellness practices that you think are accessible to you know the everyday person that you know maybe isn't a huge investment in time and money that you guys like swear by or make sure you do every day I have three that I wrote down based on your questions and (laughs) I'm just realizing that they're all pretty much free yes okay that's what we love Um, I didn't write this, but number one, always for that's a retrograde is hydrating, obviously. Hydrate water. Um, Also don't drink, um, try to drink like spring water or basically I'm just really against like Aquafina (laughs) and Dasani and drinking out of shitty plastic in general. Uh So, you know, if you live in a place where your drinking water isn't healthy, like we interviewed Erin Brockovich and she told us that if you just buy, I know, name drop, um, if you buy, we love her too. I was like, we interviewed her during 2020 and I was like, I'm so sad we didn't get to meet Erin Brockovich in person. Like, She was amazing. That was one of the biggest heartbreaks of the pandemic. What would throw me is that Erin Brockovich isn't Julia Roberts. I know. (laughs) I know. I've never met Julia, but Erin is such a force. Yeah. Yeah. They're on the same level, if not, Yes. You know, agree. So I would say this is incredible woman. She was like the coolest. I, where is she now? Um, I, but the, the thing that she told us, this isn't free and this is a a kind of a, a tangent, but she said the pure water filter that you can buy P U R. Oh, I've seen those. Mm -hmm. That's like a really pretty good quality for like across the board water. Um, obviously not if you like live in a place like where the water is like super toxic, but just to get rid of like your, you know, run of the mill, things that you wouldn't want to drink pure is like better than like the Brita or something. And those are both available at CVS. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I, um, but then the the three things are sweating. I think like exercising, running, walking, like high. I just listened to your episode on the, um, your, the, the bags. On a bag. Well, okay. Well, yeah. If you're like, if you're trying to spend some coin, that's where to do it. Get a sweat bag. But if you don't have that type of flexible income than just sweating in general, I think is like a non-negotiable for wellness. And then for me, like stretching is really important. Doing oh, yoga, God, something so to ground. Really? Yeah. Just like, even just like a gentle 15 minute, like sun salutation moment. I'm going to start. <laughs> I, stretch every, I love stretching. Me yeah. Too. I was going to add to that in terms of like, one of my favorite things is like a YouTube stretch video. Yeah. Like you can just Google them. Oh, They're yeah. free, obviously. They're on YouTube. Like a stretch ballet, like a ballet stretch or like a yoga stretch, like a yin yoga stretch. I I love doing those. Yeah. And I, you know, I can like feed it onto my television. That was like one of the things that really helped me stay in my body throughout all this time of being home and so accessible. And like some of them are super cheesy, but it doesn't matter because the, the moves are good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So water, stretch, sweat. And then I think that journaling or keeping track of your mental state in that way is like really important. Even if you're not like a journaler person, I think having a notebook where you write your thoughts down and it gives you a place to like reflect yourself and investigate yourself when it comes to problem solving or creativity or like any, any, any angle of your mind, having a place where it's outside of your head to go into, I think is like so important, Yeah, more important than maybe all of the other things, because that will get you to the place where you realize, oh, maybe I should be exercising more. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, like yeah. the journaling is the place where you can be truthful and where you can look at yourself and be like, 
oh i think that oh oh i want to create that <laughs> oh, <lab,"> you know <laughs> we, we have the the pact that if any of us either of us go the other person burns their burn all the yeah <laughs> yeah and the two practices we've talked about a lot on the show in terms of journaling is one from nicole Sachs, who um her practice is the cure is the cure for chronic pain, which is the mind body connection. And she talks about a 20 minute journaling practice called journal speak, where you literally, you can just anything that like you, that lives inside of you, you get it out, type it out is what she says, or write it out, but she wants you to rip it up or delete it afterwards, like right after set the timer. And like, it's challenging because it's all the things that you suppressed and told yourself not to say out loud or any of that it helps because the idea is that like we hold so much in our bodies and then it mm -hmm. obviously Turns manifests as, as illness and so that and then obviously uh artists way uh morning pages the three pages of writing every morning but honestly like i always say as long as you're doing it like obviously the morning is wonderful but to do it at any time during the day is so helpful I also find like in bed at night is kind of a great time to do it as well. That's I, what I, I like yeah. I like evening for some reason. I just yeah. like, and you can also yeah. just reflect on the day and things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What bugged you during the day? Yeah. And it's well, sometimes I find like I lay down at night and then that's when I have like all my realizations. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. You, <laughs> have to keep, you have to keep pen and paper by your bed because even for like Oh, I need to go to the grocery store tomorrow. Like even stuff like that, that'll keep you up at night. You're like, yeah, to totally. And you know, you know, you get that thing in your mind where you have the thought and then, and then you have, and you're like, okay, I should write that down. And then your other brain is like, you'll remember it. Yeah. Yeah. And I never, never do. Never do remember it. Never. Another thing that's like a really fun little boost during the day free is this is also from Julia Cameron's The Artist Way, but finding the synchronicity within the day and reflecting on that, like what? You know, it can be something like I thought of this person yesterday and then they called me or, mm -hmm. you know, to look through the world in that lens just helps me. I, yeah. I appreciate just finding a little bit of magic. It just helps my soul. Yeah, we, we need that, especially in, yeah. in the current yeah. climate. <laughs> yes. Well, Ladies, it was so great to connect with you again. Thank you for coming on our podcast. Yeah, this is I so, so fun. I had so much fun on your guys's. I really Aww. did. We're, and we're such huge fans. Yeah, Likewise. we need you both on. Yeah. Yes, wow. Come back. We'll come we on can now. talk about really, we just outed myself as a medium the other day. So, oh, yeah, that's a whole weirder. other thing. Yeah. <laughs> we mean, wait, your fans are coming out of the woodwork asking you to find them find their dead relatives or what do you mean? No, are getting we just, we've been slowly like introducing the audience to like our actual, I see. Yeah, I see. Like yeah. our superpowers. Nat's had some like conversations, some like communications with, uh, spirit. Uh, yeah, I, pred I predict pregnancies in my dreams and it, I'm oh. five out of five right now. So <gasps> wow. damn. Yeah. Yeah, I'm closed off. I don't have any. <laughs> That's okay, fine. Okay, well, have a great rest of your day. And it was you so great talking to you guys. Likewise. Thank we'll you, you so much. Soon.